hello everyone you all are welcome back to my channel i greet you all i call it to all your time good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are watching this video for that is my great thing i so much appreciate every one of you that watch my video that share my video may god bless you Oh, if you never subscribe for this my channel, do me a favor and subscribe and hit the bell so that if I drop on, you'll be the first person to receive. Okay, my people, I bring the updates. Make we watch, make we put our comment, put our opinion there. What do you think concerning this video? Put it in the comment section. Okay, make I put the full video. Make we watch. 19 years post call. Oh has vast exposure to general legal practice and litigation and by the special grace of god i'm a knight of saint christopher in Ireland communion so i live a simple life i'm sin advocate of the masses and defender of the defendless and defender of the oppressed of the, of the, of the, of the, of the oppressed thank you so much for having me it's a pleasure being with you thank you sir is there more to being a good general counsel than just following the law? Okay, the, the question appears to be vague. Uh, because a general counsel, from my own understanding, within the context of a legal practice, means a, law, means a lawyer, entire lawyer who is into a uh, vast area of practice. Now, in law, in legal practice, we have litigation, we have um, criminal law. We have a commercial law, we have a civil law, we have several segments of laws. So uh, when you talk about general general counsel, some people may liken it to people who are into these various areas. Uh, segment areas of law. So um, uh, we specialize in commercial, specialize in criminal, specialize in civil too. And um, we've been doing justice to it. Since uh, my year of, since I was, I, um, I was called to bar as a lawyer, in fact, I can assure you, I can tell you this, that from the moment I was called to bar till date, I've been, I've been into active legal practice. I've not ceased from one day from practicing law. And that has been, has been helping me so immensely in the feat I've been achieving in this law, this course, this discipline. Thank you. All right. Some say if um, Unam Dikan wins the Nigerian government, that it will be the best um, chance of Biafra gaining more grants as a democratic society. Would you agree with that? Well, it depends. You know, uh, if it's within the context of the case we have at hand, uh, uh, with uh, particular regard to the matter before the court, uh, winning federal government is uh, a matter, is a forgotten issue. Is uh, That is a concluded uh, matter. Uh, but I know we are going to win the federal government. I've had won them before. We're going to win them in court. Uh, so, and uh, because Nam Dekano hasn't committed an offense to law. Now, the, <coughs> the right to self-determination is externally provided under our laws, sanctioned by also Nigerian laws. So, and in the sense of this right, one may not be deemed to have committed an offense to law. So, by arresting him, and I don't think it's he hasn't done anything wrong by <coughs> accepting for his right and right of his people. So because it's a, a right provided and also covered, protected by a law, by guarantee under our law. Now, what is important at this point in time is to consider the actions the federal government is taking against those who are saying that, look, we want our, our own sovereignty to our, our states and they, they are doing this within the confines of law. How they are being, of course, it's the, it's the, the, the facts abound about how they were being slaughtered, how they were being killed by security agents, some provoked, right from 2016, when Nandekano was initially arrested and also and, um, and detained unlawfully by the federal government. So a lot of IP members were murdered in cold blood. And the, 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 it's a matter of common knowledge. Uh, but this matter is also before the International Criminal Court, as I speak to you. So, <coughs> so this recent abduction of Nandekano, in Kenya and the uh, external rendition to Nigeria, which is now being challenged in the appeal as I speak to you. So far as a matter of fact, the judgment has been resolved. Uh, it's a matter I know by his grace of God we are going to win and he will regain his freedom soon. Uh -huh. So the point is that 
the pertinent question at this point in time is to determine whether this right exercisable by the members of IPOB is provided under, under the law of the country. And the answer to that question is simple, yes. So, and you cannot shut them out. You cannot intimidate them to stop in, to stop in, to, in to deny them that right. It can't happen. So, as, uh, so and they have been at all time, Matura, uh, aside this right within the confines of law. And so, this is, uh, this is extant and is clear. So, winning government in court is a matter of, of a matter of, it's a concluded uh, issue. I know we're going to win them because I, I've been into this case since 2015. I've been into IPOB case 2015. And it's on record, I can assure you, it's on record. I've done over 1,000 cases, in fact, affecting IPOB members against the federal government. And in, in all these cases, I've won all of them, with no exception. So government has not won any of the cases. So, and I'm going to win them again. We're going to win them again. Thank you so much. So what's your relationship with Namdekano? Namdekano is my client. So I'm also leader of IPOB. Of course, you know, I act in dual capacity in managing IPOB cases. I am a lawyer, personal lawyer to Namdekano in one breed. In second breed, I'm a lawyer to IPOB as an organization. So that will tell you that is special to me. So thank you. So what is it like to be a lawyer to IPOB? Well, the one thing that's anything difficult about it, the, what I can assure you and I've been telling people is that when you are in this kind of situation, case, when you find yourself in this kind of case, it's only you, it's, all, it's up for you to know, determine, identify what you want and how to go about it. Of course, it doesn't go without being threatened. It doesn't go without being, because the matter you're doing against the government of the state, government has the capacity to kill. They have the capacity to oppress. They have the capacity to, to shut you out. They have the capacity to eliminate. Now, but that capacity is limited, because once God is in, in control, they can't excite, it can't happen. I will use myself as an instance, an example. <clears throat> I've been attacked several times. I've been, I've, I've had that I share with them. They've attempted eliminating me <coughs> not once, not twice, three times. But in all of these situations, in all of these instances, God saved me. So because of what? Because I've been very upright. And I've been very decisive in my steps, in my Lego steps. So, and I've not, I've not, I've not compromised. Well, that's the most important thing. So in the course of managing this case, you must ensure that you are upright. That's most important. No matter, regardless of the kind of threat you are getting from anybody, make sure you are upright and you are honest to what you are doing. And you are playing your role very well. That's the most important thing. But the moment you start, you start um, taking certain steps, which is prejudicial to the interests of those you are representing, then apparently you can be set up and you will, you will challenge going for that. So I've been... Uh, there's nothing difficult about it because God is there with us. In simple, in simple language, we give return all glory, adoration, and thanks and praise to God Almighty for leading us aright, giving us the strength and sustaining us, and protecting us against the evil ones who has been out there. The evil ones, I mean, when I mean evil ones, I mean the, 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 the security agents, the lawless security agents we have in the country, whom the, the government usually send after us. I will give you an instance to this effect. June 2nd, June 6th, 2021, my house in the village was invaded by Nigerian security agents, made up of the SSS, the police, the military, and other security uh, formations. And my PA was right in my house, murdered in a cold blood, then dumped inside my car, one of my cars, taken somewhere and burnt alive, burnt. God so being so God being so kind. I was I was in the house. But God said God protected me also. As I speak to you today, none of the Nigerian security agents, known them, military, police, SSS, civil defense, called them, have never accepted or admitted being part of the oppression. And when I filed action against them, against them in court, they filed the counter, they filed a res response to those uh, to the my to my suit in fire court, denying ever coming to my house. But God being so kind, 
I captured them in my in my camera with my camera CCTV footage. Captured all of them. Captured their actual activities. Captured their uniforms. Possibly in some cases, captured their 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 identities. So and this we are played in court. I want to have sure it is. It should be in the public domain now. It's in played in court and eventually I got judgment against them. So and as I speak to you, two of my staff was also abducted during that operation. That bloody onslaught on my in my home. Then two of my staff were adopted by by them, and we try eventually we were able we got an information that we were being detailed at the SSS headquarters. I wrote to the DGSS, demanding for release of them before the judgment was delivered last that was last two months. And they, they, they never responded. So this will tell you the kind of sacrifice you pay in the cost of defending your people. If I'm not doing IPOB case, I may not be so I may not be exposed to that kind of uh, situation. But that will not deter me because I know I'm doing it, I'm 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 a rare part. I'm, I'm prosecuting a just cause. So it cannot determine me. And I know and I believe God that the, my, my, my wards, my stewards who were arrested, who were abducted during that operation, will be freed. Uh, so this is, I'm just giving you kind of an insight as to part what we are passing through in the course of managing this case. The once God is with you, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. And God is with us. Thank you. Okay. Being the um, IPOB lawyer, do you believe in their ideology? I should have answered that question before now. When I said about right to self-determination, it's extant. It's a right guarantee under our law. And that right, it's a right even the Yorubas have to carry size. It's right even the outsiders can carry size. It's right even the full within the confines of this of the, of the, of the general nation can exercise. So, and what I'm saying, what I'm talk, what I, what I saying is simple. We want, we're no longer comfortable being in this contraption. We want our own state. So, now, if government has taken them serious, they have a way of approaching their demands. Engage them to discuss with them. Let me know, understand, this is my children. I said, I don't got, you're no longer my father. We have the right to say, I don't got your father, to disown you. I have the right to disown my father, my father, if he was alive, if he's still alive. My father has the right to dis disown me as his father. It's a, it's a right. But this is a constitutional guarantee right for someone to excite. It's a right, it's right sanctioned by our laws. Now, when they are saying that we want our own nation, we want to go back to one, want to want be Biafra, government should have ordinarily listened to their demands and know the possibility of probably meeting those demands. And also dialoguing with them instead of going after them. Because the moment they started this agitation, they started killing them. Of course, what happened in Wah High School? On May, May 2016, it's a matter of common knowledge. Over 28 persons were killed. Nani Kano's house was invaded on 14th of September 2017. 28 unarmed and innocent citizens were slaughtered by the Nigerian government. These are people who were not armed in any manner. Then it's the, 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 the history of atrocities and genocidal massacre of innocent members of IPOB by the Nigerian state. It's there. It's the, the public domain. So, and that cannot suppress that ideology at all because it's ideology which is divine the world the state does not have many ways of approaching them probably look into their demands and by further determining them they cannot have committed no offense unto law they are fueling they are, uh, they are fueling strengthening the agitation to continue because they cannot stop the agitation it's an ideology that cannot be killed by anybody even the federal government cannot kill it thank you all right there have been in the past few months there have been a lot of uh, unrest in the southeast Imo state, to be precise, where houses are being burned and there are a lot of accusations that um, IPOB are the ones responsible for all this. Why, in the other end, they are saying they are actually attacked from the unknown gunmen. We want to know what measures have IPOB taken to distinguish themselves. Like, I will tell people that they are not the ones responsible for all these um, dangerous attacks. Thank you so much. Let me, you see, this, very portion, this question is a very important question, and I need to, I want, I want you to pay attention to my response. Shortly after the abduction and the external rendition of Namde, my client, Namde, came to Nigeria. There are protests kind of and civil unrest in the Southeast in reaction to the manner in which he was treated. He was tortured, he was beaten, he was subjected to all forms of inhuman and degrading treatment at the point of arrest abduction so before it was uh, forcibly rendered render to nigeria so i don't want to go into that aspect of the case but let me just clear you now apparently a 
situation such as this, you see people who will take advantage of the process of the system to start fomenting trouble and also start committing crimes. Now, in the course of time, it was identified by 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 the my my client by Ami IP will be identified. We were able to identify the fact that there are bad eggs. There are people who are using the advantage, who are taking advantage of Nam the Kano's incarceration to be fomenting trouble, to be committing crime. And these are people who are not a ASM member. And they are hiding under the cloak of IPOB. They are hiding under the protection of IPOB. Once you get them, they say, no, they are IPOB. And when they commit to a friend, they will say that they are IPOB members. They are not. Now, and they came out to issue statements. If you go to my, if you visit my, my social media handle, you see several statements I've issued at the Fed on behalf of Nam the Khan. After discussing with him, he'll give you the directive to issue statements. <coughs> and I know IPOB also followed it up. So IPB at some point also also volunteered to be part of the people that to to, to participate in 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 apprehending and also going after this criminal in their various publications. It's there, you can find it. Go go to their website, you see it. Now, but um you see one thing about security I used to tell people is that when situations such as that happen, there is reason, there's need for you to also get people who are even at the bottom involved when i mean at the bottom, who put volunteers at the, at, at the at the at the local level involved national arrest, everybody involved they integrate them into the system because you see it's only about someone who like someone who live in a particular setting that can be able to identify someone who is a criminal or someone who's involved who's, who's fomenting trouble or someone who's who is engaging in criminalities within that locality. But Imo State is an exceptional case in the sense that the government of Imo State is also assisting in creating civil unrest and also creating problems in the state. I, will, I have to, I issued a statement a few days ago about what happened in Imo State. To this is a place where you see security men. You see people they call security officers created by the Imo State government. A bag of outfit, security outfit. You see them along with the soldiers and also at sometimes SSS and the police. They will, they will be killing people without profiling them. Once they see you on the street, they'll kill. Look at what is happening in Osukitoka, in Osumoku, in Olo Axis, our man Ko. They've killed over 500 persons there. I'm handling the case today. I'm going to court against the Muslim government, and I'm going to international criminal action against the Muslim government. Now. There are what they call rules of engagement. Rules of engagement entail that if you are going after this your friend who is here sitting, who is looking at me, probably identify him as a criminal. In the course of going after him, you're not supposed to kill this lady or kill these two cameramen. No. You will identify him, apprehend him, you will have a certain choice you, which we are which you deploy in apprehending him. It not you not in the course of pushing him, start killing everybody around that place. It's a crime against humanity. And that's what's so terrible in the state. Now, if I will ask you, can the state justify? And the, well, the, the response to my uh, press conference, uh, press statement, the, the Commissioner of Information was making, struggling to defend the, the obvious, telling us that, um, that, the, that uh, the state government is not even aware about what's happening in the state. Who opposed the man? Is, as I'm concerned, is the governor of the state today. And by virtue of which position is the chief security officer of the state. So if any, there's any security breach in the state, or any crime committed by the security agents that are being commit, committed, committed, as they are committing now, is the one to be held responsible. Is one to produce those who are involved. Is one who are also to identify those who are involved. Because it's the chief security of the state. Now that means they have succeeded in burning over 50 to 100 houses in you know, so you one. I want mama as all as over 100 houses who have them on record. So tell me what those houses are doing with the, the, with, the, with the crime which they are fighting. So the state is not helping the situation at all. The state is, being, is actually creating the security in the state. Look at other states. We have Anambra, we have Imo, we have Abia State, we have uh, Ebony State. Have you seen that kind of thing? Escalation in the, in, the, in, the, in the security and crisis. Have you seen it in our state? We are not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to exaggerate the fact there are people who are criminals. And I'm not protecting them. I've written about them before. And I'm still saying it today. 
in, in Anambra State, people were, security agents were involved. People were involved. There are strategies which was created by the state government to apprehend these people. And, uh, and it's working out. People, were, people who are living, civilians that were involved. So before you go to talk to Mr. Go after Mr. A, you must have profiled him. Profile define your target before going after him. So, but as I speak to you today, yesterday I was somebody called me at about 2 a.m. I think yesterday was Tuesday, right? Yes. Somebody called me about about uh, about 2 a.m. to alert me about what is happening now. One moment, as at 2 a.m. yesterday, there are still burning houses there. So tell me, is there any justification under our law? For you to go after people's innocent people's civilians houses and lives and properties. People are being killed in the street. People are being killed in their farms. People are being killed in their houses. Only sons, family breadwinners of the families have been eliminated on a daily basis in the most state. And the governor thought that at the end of the system you go free. You must have a day with international criminal court. And we're making provision for a provision for that effect. It was, it will, by the time we finish with him in, before the International Criminal Court, it will start as a different to other people who are doing the same part. We are tick letting our, we are tick letting our evidence. We are tick letting our facts. And we are going there. Because it's a clear, clear case of crime against humanity that are committing. Genocide that's taking place in the state. We have, if I show, if I give you the, the, the video clip now, you will not believe it. You, 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 will, you will not believe it. It's hard trending. Thank you. Um, thank you, Barista, if I... Um, lastly, do you think um, the Nigerian judiciary is under any siege? Well, the point is, I'm not saying they, they don't, I don't understand what you mean by siege. The point is that um, the system is corrupt, profoundly corrupt in all aspects of uh, uh, the governance. Including the governance, the judiciary is corrupt. I won't exonerate them. We we'll have, still have good ones among them, not all of them. The executive same thing, the legislature, look at what's happening in the National Assembly. So, um, and the, the worst part is that the executives, even the fair one, the, the few of them that are, that are courageous to deliver justice without fear and favor, some are being intimidated and oppressed. Only this one I read over the paper, over the online, that the presiding judge of Court of Appeal, uh, Kaduna or Dira Balkan, his house was invaded yesterday night by EFCC. Yesterday night by EFCC. Presiding judge. Of court of appeal was invaded by the executives. Obviously, I don't know what they're after. That. Right? So the point is that I, I can I can borrow your language, I wait and say that, and also I agree with you that judicial is on that stage. I can borrow because as what's happened, what, what happened, what happened now in the Canada's case before we went on appeal. We have series of series of applications we have with respect to his lordship. Applications were filed before the court. Like in 2019, we filed an application to, to review another. Uh, Bakketen, who's the uh, order uh, revoking his bail when he's after, shortly after the invasion of his premises and his appearance in Israel. He posed an affidavit of fact stating what happened in his house, how he now escaped by May out of Providence. And we find this fact before the court to inform the court that look at what led to this guy's disappearance. And 28 persons were killed. It's a matter of common knowledge. Even the military admitted they go to, they, 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 they even, they invaded his premises. They admitted it in their various uh, publications and also their press statements. So, and we are still looking for evidence to try to, to, to demonstrate or show you, to convince you that this actually took place. At the end of the day, that application was, uh, was, was treated with levity. So, I don't want to go into the merit or otherwise of what's happening in the court, but I know that a lot of things are going wrong. The system is really, is rotting. I can assure you of that. And the judiciary, the judges have been intimidated, been opinion intimidated. They are working under fear. What happened before Justice Oza Ijomo Jukun, before my Lord, Justice Ijomo Jukun, for High Court here? I believe you, and you, you, might have, you are familiar with it. During the when the, when the Soro was brought to court, what happened, what, 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 what happened to her? DSS jumped inside the court in an attempt to scare the judge. You were there, and the judge had to really stop sitting. They jumped inside the court too. I don't know where they go they, because the court, but the court made an order. The system that order must be obeyed. And the and the in an attempt to, to probably to free so then and the judge the judge the judge the judge the, the, the security of personnel ran into the court.
yes my people we don't come to the end of this update thank you guys for watching please like the video share the video put your comment for the comment section see you guys for my next video bye bye